Welcome to my 2018 theatre quiz. It's been an exciting year with some great productions, some disasters, lots of Hollywood stars coming to act for us, and many reviews on One Minute Theatre Reviews. How well have you been following the UK theatre scene this year? I've got 20 questions for you about actors, events and awards that made the news in the last year, and each one is worth up to three points. Question one. The year started with two rival productions of A Christmas Carol, one at Stratford and one at the Old Vic in London. So who were the two Scrooges? Three points if you know the answer without a clue. No? Okay, here are three choices. Richard Wilson and Nigel Havers, Phil Davis and Reese Evans, Bill Nighy and Don Warrington. And the answer is Phil Davis played Scrooge in Stratford and Reese Evans was the old miser at the old Vic. Three points if you got it straight away, one point if you needed the multiple choice. Second question. The National Theatre's production of Macbeth got a pasting from the critics, so let's play Name the Critic. Here are three quotes and three critics' names. Who said what? So the three critics I'm quoting are Dominic Cavendish in The Telegraph, Anne Treneman in The Times, and Quentin Letts in The Daily Mail. And here are the three quotes. The sooner it crawls back into its hole, the better. The ambience is Mad Max meets Infernal Recycling Pit. The third one, a low-lit mess engulfed by blunt grottiness. Well, the first quoting all these terrible reviews has been viewed over 13,000 times, which is 13 times more than my very positive review of the production. It just goes to show you that YouTube viewers love a disaster. So that's one point for each one you got right. Now, number three. There's going to be a screen adaptation of Andrew Lloyd Webber's Cats. Which theatrical dame has been cast as Old Deuteronomy? You can have three points if you know without any clues. Okay, here is your multiple choice. Is it Dame Judi Dench, Dame Maggie Smith, Dame Janet Sussman? It's Dame Judi Dench, who was due to appear in the original production back in 1981 until she snapped her Achilles tendon. Question four. Aidan Turner and Jim Broadbent both starred in plays in London by which author? Again, three points if you know it straight away, one point if you need the multiple choice. And the choice is Harold Pinter, Martin McDonough, Tom Stoppard. The plays were The Lieutenant of Inishmore and A Very, Very, Very Dark Matter, written by Martin McDonough. I reviewed both of these plays and they were two of the highlights of my year. There was much excitement this year when a woman became the doctor in Doctor Who. In theatre too, women have been scaling the barricades of traditionally male roles. So match these three women to the roles they played. You get one point for each correct matching. The women are Rosalie Craig, Michelle Terry and Catherine Hunter. And the roles are Bobby and Stephen Stondheim's company, uh, renamed as Bobby with an IE, the title role of Timon of Athens at Stratford, and Hamlet at Shakespeare's Globe. And the answer is Rosalie Craig played an award-winning Bobby in Sondheim's Company. Globe Artistic Director Michelle Terry played Hamlet and Catherine Hunter took on Timon of Athens. Question 6. In April, the Royal Shakespeare Company raised some funds by auctioning off costumes worn by famous actors. Can you match the item of clothing to the actor? One point for each correct matching. And the items are a pair of trousers, a doublet and hose, a coat. And the actors are David Tennant, Judy Dench and Ian McKellen. So let's dress these actors. Well, the trousers were worn by David Tennant when he played Hamlet. The coat belonged to King Lear, as played by Ian McKellen, which leaves the doublet and hose, which were worn by Dame Judi Dench in Shakespeare Live. A Hollywood star best known for his role in Lord of the Rings came back to Britain 
to starring Killer Joe at the Trafalgar Studios. Who is he? Is he Orlando Bloom, Elijah Wood, Andy Serkis? Well, Killer Joe starred Orlando Bloom, and very good he was too. Question 8. Which actor was honoured in the UK Theatre Awards for her outstanding contribution to theatre? and said her success was down to her work with Sarah Frankham, Artistic Director of the Royal Exchange Theatre. Choices, Brenda Blethen, Maxim Peake, Julie Hesmondhol. And the answer is Maxim Peake. Three points if you got that without needing to hear the choice. One point if you got it from the choice. Which show in Stratford-upon-Avon was about a famous theatre director who made her name in Stratford, London? Was it Flowers for Mrs. Harris, The American Clock, or Miss Littlewood? And the answer is Miss Littlewood, which was about Joan Littlewood, and very enjoyable it was too. If you knew that without any clues, give yourself three points. If you chose correctly from the list, you get one point. For a bonus point, which actor do all three of these productions have in common? It is that they all feature the wonderful Claire Burt. Here's another production I absolutely loved, Red, which starred Alfred Molina as which famous painter? Was it Mark Rothko, Jackson Pollock or Jasper Johns? And it was Mark Rothko and you get three points if you knew that without hearing the choice. OK, we're halfway through. Question 11. Who starred in a one-woman play at the Royal Court, which transferred to New York and became the first show to be produced by Audible Books? Was it Laura Linney, Kate Blanchett, or Kerry Mulligan? And the answer is Kerry Mulligan. And you get three points if you didn't need a clue, one point if you did. The play was Girls and Boys, in which I thought she gave an extraordinary performance. Laura Linney, by the way, was in the one-woman show My Name is Lucy Barton at the Old Vic, which is returning in 2019, and Kate Blanchett is due to start the National Theatre in 2019. Next question. Which choreographer became the first woman to have a London theatre named after her? OK, you know the way the points work by now, so here's your choice. Siobhan Davis, Gillian Lynn, Arlene Phillips. And the answer is that the new London Theatre is now called the Gillian Lynn Theatre. And Gillian Lynn choreographed the original production of Cats at the new London Theatre. And she was greatly mourned when she died. 28 years ago, Leeds Playhouse changed its name to West Yorkshire Playhouse. This year, it changed its name again. What's the new name? Three points if you don't need a clue, and if the, but if you do, the multiple choice is Yorkshire Playhouse, Leeds Playhouse, West Yorkshire Theatre. And the answer is, it's gone back to its original name, Leeds Playhouse. Question 14. This play, with a comma in the title, started at Chichester last year, then moved to Hampstead earlier in 2018, and ended up in the West End by the end of the year. Its star, Sharon D. Clarke, followed it all the way. What was it called? Was it Caroline, comma, or Change? Home, comma, I'm Darling? Twelfth Night, comma, or What You Will? It's Caroline or Change. And for a bonus point, what does the D in Sharon D. Clarke stand for? Well, well done, and a point if you know that it's Dolores. Now here's one to separate the casual theatre-goer from the fanatic. This question is called Name the Bosses. Can you match these top London theatres with the names of the people who are in charge? Well, at the time of recording anyway. The National Theatre, the Royal Court, the Young Vic. And here are the names, in no particular order. Kwame Kweyama, Vicky Featherston, Rufus Norris. The answers are that the National is run by Rufus Norris, Kwame Kweyamar is in charge at the Young Vic, and the Royal Court has Vicky Featherston at the helm. Now, arts people love to give each other awards, so here are three plays and three awards. It's your job to match the play 
with the award. And the plays are The Jungle, The Inheritance, The Ferryman. And these are the awards they won. The Olivier Best New Play Award, The Evening Standard Best Play Award, and the Southbank Sky Arts Theatre Award. So which play won which award? Well, here are the answers. The Jungle won the Southbank Sky Arts Theatre Award, The Inheritance got the Evening Standard Best Play Award, and The Ferryman received the Olivier Best New Play Award. One point for each that you answered correctly. And at the Olivier Awards, which pantomime made history by winning an Olivier in the entertainment category? Was it Dick Whittington at the London Palladium, Cinderella at the Hackney Empire, or Jack and the Beanstalk at Salisbury Playhouse? And it was Dick Whittington at the Palladium. Oh yes it was. But Jack and the Beanstalk at Salisbury Playhouse did win an award at the Great British Pantomime Awards. And sticking with awards for one more question. Which two actors won the Evening Standard Awards for Best Actor and Best Actress for their performances as lovers in the same play, thus avoiding any dressing room one-upmanship? Were they Roy Kinnear and Anne-Marie Duff, Ray Fiennes and Sophia Canedo, Christopher Eccleston and Neve Cusack? Well, it was Ray Fiennes and Sophia Canedo. And for a bonus point, what was the play? The answer is Antony and Cleopatra at the National Theatre. Question 19, nearly finished. This round could be called Everyone Will Be Famous for 15 Minutes. I bet you remember that back in June, an actor who was understudying in 42nd Street was whipped across the West End to take over the lead role in Mamma Mia halfway through when the star was injured. She was later given a short spell in the, one of the main roles in 42nd Street. But do you remember her name? Was it Sue Perry, Sam Piri, or Steph Parry? Well, the answer is Steph Parry, and congratulations if you knew without that clue. You deserve more than three points, but that's all you're getting. And one point if you chose right out of that list. Finally, someone whose name everybody knows. Which actor decided to celebrate his 80th birthday by touring 80 theatres with a one-man show? Was it Sir Derek Jacobi? Sir Patrick Stewart or Sir Ian McKellen? And the answer is, of course, Sir Ian McKellen. And that's the end of the quiz. The maximum score is 63, including bonuses. If you scored less than 30, you really need to get out to the theatre more. If you score between 31 and 55, well, you should get a season ticket. And if you scored over 56, you deserve a standing ovation. Thank you for watching and taking part in my quiz. I hope you've enjoyed it. My name is Paul Seven Lewis and I'm looking forward to another year of great theatre which I'll be covering in my YouTube channel, One Minute Theatre Reviews. If you'd like to subscribe to my channel, One Minute Theatre Reviews, please click on the icon at the bottom of the screen.